Gil told me that you were here. I didn't think there was a coincidence. Uh, sit down. Have a, have a seat. Um, your father's looking for you, Russ. When did you see Vince? He came by my office earlier this morning. He said he was trying to get in touch with you and that you didn't come home last night. Well, none of my eyes were none of his concern. Well, he wants to talk to you. About what? Russ, are you all right? What does Vince want to talk to me about? I don't know, but he's worried about you. Russ, I haven't seen you like this before. You look like you haven't slept in days. Are you sure you're all right? What is it? Okay, I guess I better leave. Look, you, you just, you don't understand. Russ, that's beginning to sound like a broken well, record. Well, it's true. You all, you're in your own little world. You got all your little answers all neatly figured out. Let's just, let's just leave it at that, all right? That's your own opinion. Don't you see what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to spare you. Spare me from what? From what's out there. In the real world, I couldn't even begin to explain it to you. <laughs> Russ, are you trying to tell me that we're not real, you and I? <sighs> forget it. Just forget it. I, I knew you wouldn't understand. Russ, I want to help you. Please believe me. You came, you came by to me yesterday morning. Was it yesterday? I can't even think anymore. <laughs> What are you involved with? No, don't tell me. You can't tell me. You came by yesterday morning and you told me we were through, remember? The big goodbye scene. Well, I thought that you meant it. At least what I feel inside here, I thought you meant it. Now, do I have to go through that all over again? No. I don't want to drag either one of us through that again. I don't even know why I came. I just told Vince that if I saw you, I'd tell you that he's trying to get in touch with you. I do know that I care about you, Russ. Very deeply. But I finally come to the realization there's no future for us. You know, I care about you, too. I know you don't believe that, but I do. And you come in here and you tell me there's no future. There isn't. But I'm not thinking about that now. I'm thinking about you. Mary, I can see that you're hurting. Please. Russ, what is wrong? What is it? I just can't stand the thought of losing you. That's, that's, I've lost so much. Russ, I don't believe you. I don't believe that it's really what's bothering you right now. It's something else. Please tell me what it is. I can't. You can't you see that? Don't you no. see that? No! I don't even know why I'm here. Part of me wants to go and part of me wants to stay. I just know that I want to help you. I don't know how much that means to me. It's not any good. What? What? I think I better go. Okay, Miss Johnson, we're ready for you now. How is Miss LaCroix doing? Uh, she's about four months. No, pregnant? Yeah, I'm afraid so. 
But she's just a baby. What is she, 15 years old? Well, that's what she told us. I don't, she didn't even know she was pregnant. I mean, it's such a shame these kids come here. They can't even take care of themselves, much less a baby. I, I was trying to explain to her about how much protein she should be eating. She just stared at me with this blank look like she didn't have any idea what I was talking about. Oh, you know, I contacted the health department about sending us some pamphlets on prenatal care. Well, I suppose that would help, but I really don't know. You should hear Carla go on about nutrition. Boy, she's done her homework on that one. Well, maybe we could get her down here to talk to some of these girls, because obviously I'm not getting through to them. You know, Ben, that's not a bad idea. We could hold some nutrition classes. Nutrition and child care. Maybe I'll ask around and see what kind of interest there is in it. Well, I am convinced that education is uh, the key. Jane, I didn't know you were planning to stop by here. Well, maybe that's because I didn't mention it, Ma. Actually, I'm here to see Ben. Well, if it's about what I think it is, Jean, we really don't have much to talk about. Ion, who's next? Miss Glazier, she's in room one. Ben, uh, I have a new angle on this story, and I really need to talk to Lori. Now, there's a possibility that, that Blue Nobles is tied in with a prostitution ring. Well, I'm sorry, Jean, but I don't see how Lori can help you with that. Well, word is out that Blue Nobles and some other guy were seen several times down at Monroe Continuation School soliciting girls. So? So, if it's true, and he's tied in with this prostitution ring, it could be the same one that Babs Farley was connected Gene, with. Gene, you are grabbing at straws. Maybe. But Lori might have seen or heard something that would help us hook up to this gang. Ben, I promise I'll be gentle with her. Now, you can come into the interview yourself, and if things get out of hand, you think it gets too rough, you could cut it short. Anything to do with that incident upsets her, and I won't have it, Gene. But she volunteered to talk to Brubaker, Ben. So? You find out from him what she said. I'm not going to put her through that again. I own, could I have uh, Mrs. Glazer's chart, please? I don't want to keep her waiting. Here you are. Ben, please. Jean? No. Jean, maybe you're pushing too hard. Why don't you try to put yourself in his place? I have, Mom. That's what makes it so difficult. Everything's coming along just fine, Mr. Johnson. You check back with us in about a week now, all right? Yeah. Gene, how's it going? Hey, Dave, how you doing? Hey, tell me, how's Stacy doing? Oh, she's, she's really doing well. She told me that she came down to see you, and she was really happy when she saw you. <laughs> well, not nearly as happy as I was. Yes, I'd give anything to have my family reunited. This might be just the beginning of it. All right, Miss Johnson, thank you so much. We'll see you on Wednesday night. You take care. May we help you? Good morning. Yeah. Hold on one second, would you? Janice, I told you I didn't want to be bothered. Oh, yeah, we'll send her in. Yeah, thank you. Jake? Now, okay, let's just, let me just put it this way. You know, if, if you can't do the work, then I'm gonna hire someone else who can. Fine. Hi, Gil. <sighs> I hope it didn't catch you at a bad time. No, no, no. I mean, where you're concerned, there's no such thing as a bad time. As a matter of fact, I was just going to give you a call. You know, the uh, shots we got at the construction site were so good that the client wants to try it again. Uh, this time, a different location. Maybe the same idea, though. What do you think? Well, uh, is that the only reason you came down? Of course. What else? Well, you know what I think. No. I think you made this whole thing up just so you could have a little business with Prescott Development. If you must know, I was dead set against it. My client is the one pushing for it. Well, I suppose we might be able to accommodate you. Gil, you said last time we weren't any trouble. <laughs> no, you weren't. It's just that, do you realize how much work my crew got done? I mean, with five beautiful women running around? As I recall, you yourself didn't get much work done that day. <laughs> See? See what I mean? Okay, all right. Uh, think about what it might do for their morale. Yeah, you got a point there. Mm -hmm. Good point. I mean, just looking at you does wonders for my morale. Hey, why don't we get together and go out to dinner tonight? Gil, huh? I really need your answer on this construction site deal. I've got plans to make. I do, too, for tonight. So what do you say? Gil, this is business. I need to know about the shoot. Come on, okay? I mean, I don't want to rush into anything, so let me... Oh, please. Come on. Uh, how about if we talk about it later on? Say, after dinner. Oh, Lady 
she's 85 if she's all day. May I help you? Bams! <laughs> oh, honey, it's so good to see you. <laughs> you too. And if you tell me how great oh. I look, I'll punch you right in the nose. Oh, come here. I want you to see who we got here. I never would have guessed in a million years. Now that's a compliment. Oh, hey. <laughs> good, Babs, good. Babs, this is Dr. Dave Phillips. Dave, this is Babs Folly, the friend of mine I keep talking about. Yes, haven't I seen you someplace before? Yeah, but that was quite a few pounds ago. <laughs> oh, the bag lady, of course. I let him in on your little secret. Oh, well. I really admire what you're doing. I know how hard it is to turn your life around. Believe me, I've been there. Hey, uh, Babs, I've got to get back to the office. Could I talk to you for a few minutes? Sure, Dean. Privately? Okay. Don't you go anywhere. I didn't get all dolled up like this for nothing. You know? <laughs> well, you know, you've got to hand it to her. What she's doing takes a lot of guts. Yes, I'm just praying for the day she can stop masquerading and come on home. <laughs> I need to talk to you about Miriam. Have you heard something? No, I haven't. I thought maybe you had. I'm still working on that story, but I'm, still, I'm not getting very far with that. Well, we were right about the kidnapping. Webster told me that Charles Carpenter got a phone call from some guy. My guess is it was Lance. Of course, he didn't leave his name, rank, and serial number. But how do you know that they have Miriam? Well, because they sent Carpenter a picture of Miriam holding up a newspaper. Ronnie never was real big on originality. Oh, my gosh. I should have figured that when Carpenter and Webster denied hearing anything from the kidnappers, I should have known. Well, what do you expect, Gene? They're scared. I mean, so am I. It's been so long since we've seen Miriam. I mean, I'm afraid that... Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, <sighs> don't think that I haven't considered that, too. You don't know those thugs like I do. Even if... Ronnie and Lance were connected with this. We have no proof at all. I've got all the proof I need. Right here. Good. Thanks for the info, lady. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're not going to go print this all in the newspaper or anything. I mean, I don't want to get those guys rattled. Look, I promise you I'm not going to say anything or do anything that would hurt Miriam. But now this is going to give me a good start on something. Oh, but you got to do something for me. Don't say a word to Mom because I don't want her to worry. All right? Yeah, got it. Sure. All right. I'll catch you later. Okay, bye-bye. Mom, i got to run. Bye. <laughs> Ione, I have missed you so much, I can't tell you. And I've missed you, too. You know what I realized the other day? For the first time, I'm homesick. Oh. I've never been homesick in my whole life. It's probably because I've never had a home before. Well, you got one now and a family, too. And don't you forget it. I own you, sweetie oh. pie. Oh, I keep praying for the day that you come on home. <sighs> So, you're going to force me to have dinner with you tonight, is that it? <laughs> I wouldn't call it forcing you. Let's just call it friendly persuasion. Wouldn't you rather I had dinner with you because I wanted to? You do. What I want <laughs> is to find out whether or not Modeling Associates can use a construction site. You know, you certainly drive a hard bargain, Miss Phillips. Simple yes or no would suffice, Mr. Prescott. My sentiments exactly. So what do you say? Hmm? Hey, what are you doing here? I work here, remember? Uh, Hi, Amber. Hi, Peter. Can't tell you how glad I am to see you. Hey, I thought you weren't supposed to come into work for another hour. I had a biology test this morning. It's a breeze. I got done early. Thought I'd bop over here and get you started. You Ron Davidson. Oh, I see you too. Hey, if you're in the middle of something, I'll be glad to leave. No problem. Oh, no. Please don't do that. I certainly don't want to interrupt the flow of business here. As a matter of fact, I was just asking Gil for permission to use another construction site for a shoot. All right. Hey, that's terrific. When? I mean, we're going to do it, right? I'm not sure. I'm thinking about it. Don't worry about this guy. Of course we're going to do it. It's great publicity. The guys love it. Name the time and place. Well, it's certainly easy to see who the brains are behind this operation. Yeah, thanks. You know, you really know how to ruin a night, too. Hey, Gil, I never said I wouldn't go. Oh, so you will. Well, now that I don't have to, I'll be glad to have dinner with you tonight. All right. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Mr. Macho. If you learn not to mix business and pleasure with me, you'll get a lot more pleasure than business. See you at my place at 7. Coat, yeah. please. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, Peter. Oh, not 
yet. Oh, I don't want to go, but I gotta. If I don't get back in, to Fairmont in time for my shift at Walter's restaurant, <gasps> the boss isn't too crazy about me right now anyway. <laughs> he overheard me the other day, giving a few choice words to a customer who had the nerve to leave me a dime tip. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I gotta watch my P's and Q's or I'll be out of my rear. <laughs> Better run. <laughs> Now you take care of yourself and you keep in touch. I will, I promise. And you keep praying that Miriam will show up real soon and bring her purse with her. What? Never mind. I gotta go. Oh. Bye. Oh. <laughs> now you take care. Did Gene leave? Well, he had to get back to his job. Well, I started thinking over about what he said and Maybe I overreacted. Oh, I understand how you feel. Ben and Jean does, too. Yeah, well, I realize I only—he's just doing his job. See, I can't risk letting anyone cause Lori any more pain. Oh, yes, I'm sure you acted as any husband would, but you have to understand, Jean is trying to protect the women in this town. But how? Blue Nobles is dead. Well, uh, Lori's experience might help to put other women on guard against such attacks, not to mention the lead that Jean's looking for. Does he really think that Blue Nobles was part of a prostitution ring here in town? It's possible. Yeah, I guess I have only been thinking about Lori, haven't I? Well, why don't you go home and talk it over with Lori and see how she feels? Yeah, I'll do that. Now, don't you worry about a thing, Miss Dingle. Everything's going to be fine, and we'll see you next time. Okay. All right? Well, you look like you're about a thousand miles away. Yeah, uh, Dave, could I talk something over with you? Sure, I own house the schedule. Well, as of now, everything's under control. Why don't you two just go on? Okay. It's, uh, it's about this newspaper article. It's, it's the third time And I was passing by the hospital on my way back to the office, and I thought I would stop by. There's a couple of things I wanted to talk to you about. Well, I'm glad you did. What's on your mind? Well, first, the house. Have you heard anything else about that? Well, I won't get the official notice on the commissioner's decision until next week, but he was pretty specific about his recommendation at the hearing. You mean that it's supposed to be sold? Mm-hmm. If all goes well, you and Carl and Jimmy can move into Mother's house in three or four weeks. Really? Wow! <laughs> Gosh, that's, that's great! According to Harold Webster. My goodness. But what about Nancy now? I know she's not going to take all of this lying down. Well, with Nancy, anything is possible. But let's face it, if she gets a court order, she's going to have to give in. Well, if you say so. <laughs> what else can she do? She'll have to obey. Yeah, I suppose. Gosh! I, I just can't tell you how happy Carla is about this whole thing. Do you know she's already getting wallpaper and everything to decorate the room for the baby? <laughs> Listen, I'll be so glad when you can move back in. Yeah, me too. It's going to be nice. Oh, Terry, I wanted to tell you, I saw Ben this morning. Did you ask him about Lori? Well, he hardly even listened to me. If only he would realize that I've got a job to do just like he does. Well, I'll speak to him again about it, but uh, I don't know if it's going to do any good. Mm. He and Lori are the ones who have to make the decision. I wouldn't do anything to hurt Lori. He should realize that. I mean, that and the fact that, well, the article really could do a lot of good for the rest of the women in this, in Kingsley. I, look, I'm not going to belabor the point. It's... Jean. Yeah. I'll do what I can. Thanks. Oh, I can't believe this woman's getting divorced again. This gotta be her th your third time. And here she goes again. Always the same old thing, another custody fight for who gets custody of the schnauzers. I mean, who cares? Settled out of court last time. I wonder how. Dabney, 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 Dabney. I know it's in here somewhere. Every girl I've had in here since Babs left has got her own brand of filing system. I never find anything in here. Babs at least had control of this. I mean, it was crazy, but at least she could find stuff in here. I wish Babs were here now. Try under S. Yes. Babs. You're expecting Ma Barker, maybe? It is you? <laughs> I never would have guessed it was you. Look at this. <laughs> you look terrific. Hey, watch it, buddy. Don't want me to get up. Nobody would ever know it's you. Well, I figured I'd better make it good this time. 
That's right. This is dangerous. Ronnie and Lance could still have this place staked out. Oh, listen, it's been so long since I've been up here. I think they've forgotten No, 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 it. no, 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 Babs. That's dangerous. I don't want you to do that again. You shouldn't have taken the chance. I had to. I wanted to see you. Besides, I am the only one who knows where the Dabney file really is. Under S. <clears throat> For Schnauzer. Nope. For Simpson. Her maiden name. I couldn't keep up with all of the uh, married ones. Of course. That's... Oh, Babs. I've missed you. You have got no idea how much I've missed you. Me too, Harold. You know, you don't know how hard it's getting for me to stay away. Even if it was a risk, I'm glad you're here. You know, Babs, I, I never thought I would worry so much about somebody as I do you. Oh, well. Mm. Well, I think about you all the time. I wonder, I wonder every day what you're doing. That goes both ways, Harold, both ways. told me you had a thing for older women. 